there is an atheist group that has ranked Alabama the worst for religious equality. They're saying we're actually dead last when it comes to religious equality, according to them. So I'm just going to read the article and then give you kind of a, a quick sum up of some of the things and some of the rubrics that they used and uh, let you kind of decide for yourself. So this is a article by AL.com. The group American Atheist has ranked Alabama one of the worst states for religious equality, according to a report it released today. Religious equality is under attack in Alabama, said Allison Gill, American Atheist Vice President for Legal Policy, who authored the report. Quote, the state's near total abortion ban forces one, in, one particular religious view of reproductive health on every Alabama woman. Sadly, Alabama schools let studies, sorry, let students receive credit for outside religious instruction but do not provide comprehensive, scientifically accurate sex education. Alabama lawmakers are more interested in imposing their religious views on citizens than protecting equality for everyone. So there's a couple issues with this. First of all, and this one's very obvious, it, it, pray, it plays right into that mythology that the only reason anybody would ever be opposed to abortion is because they have a religious worldview. It's, a, it's their religion that is the reason that they are against abortion. But here's the problem with that. It's simply not true. I guarantee you, and this wouldn't happen, but if I became an atheist tomorrow, if I decided God didn't exist, that would not stop me from being pro-life. There are people that are atheists that are pro-life. Austin Peterson is one of the first ones that comes to mind. He's a guy that doesn't believe in God at all and was running as the candidate for president for the Libertarian Party in the last election cycle, and he is very fervently pro-life. He says, look, I'm just looking at the science and the science backs it up. I can. I think I did an abortion special. Uh, I want to say it was about a year ago, and I spoke for legitimately thirty minutes, more than thirty minutes actually. I think it wound up being more like thirty-eight, thirty-nine. But I spoke for well over half an hour on different arguments against abortion, and didn't get into religion until the very last point. Out of that, probably thirty-five, thirty-eight minutes. Uh, spiel, and I spent the entire show on it, just about it, out of all of that, I didn't make a single religious argument up until the very last one. Now, granted, if all the scientific arguments fell apart, I would still believe that abortion is wrong because of my religious conviction. But the reverse is also true. If my religious conviction suddenly just goes away, I would still be pro-life. Because there are non-religious arguments that make sense that are pro-life. And there are more of them than the pro-choice side. There just are. Now, there is one big, uh, there is one big glaring flaw in that, which is you have to respect, to, to be able to get scientifically there, you do have to accept something that you do need a, a religious worldview to have, in my opinion. And that is life is sacred. Because if you don't believe life is sacred, then obviously you can snuff out life that's in the womb, but you can also snuff out any, I mean, you can just, I don't like that guy, I need to kill him, and you have the right to do that. That So, um, and I don't know of any atheists that actually do hold that worldview, at least not personally. And so because of that, I mean, I've, I haven't met any that are anarchists that I'm aware of. So with all that in view, what I'm saying is you don't have to be a religious person to be anti-abortion. Now, are religious people typically very against abortion? Yeah, they usually are. And I'm not saying that religion doesn't play a factor in that decision, but the idea that, oh, if we could just get rid of this religion, then abortion would be legal and nobody would have a problem with it. No, that's simply not true. That would be like suggesting that the only reason anybody was ever against the Holocaust was because of religious reasons. And when you say, well, can you prove that? Well, yeah, their religion teaches that it's wrong to kill people. Well, yes, that is accurate, but that does not mean those people would suddenly be just okay with the Holocaust if they were no longer religious. It's an absurd argument. But it's one that people typically on the pro-choice side constantly cling to. Uh, I, I can't tell you the number of protests that I've seen where there were pro-choice people uh, one of these happened on Auburn's campus. I remember I was actually at one. 
And the guy was walking around with the sign that said, keep your decision out of my uterus, which was hilarious because it was a dude. But <laughs> I don't know if he was just holding the sign from some, for someone else or he was a trainee. I have no idea. But <laughs> either way, um, he was holding up this sign. And I, again, it's not a imposing a religious belief on somebody. If my religion were to vanish, I would still be pro-life. But the left continues to cling to this. So here's the uh, other part of that. We'll read a little bit further down. The group's 2019 State of the Secular States report, an analysis of state laws and policies released today, ranks Alabama as the worst alongside Kentucky, Arkansas, and Arizona in terms of religious equality as determined by American atheists. The 2000, sorry, quote, the 2019 State of the Secular States provides a roadmap to fight Christian nationalism and promote religious equality, said Samantha McGuire, American Atheist National Field Director. To be successful in 2020 and beyond, activists and legislators should make use of this powerful resource and demand equality from their elected officials. All right, so there's several minor points that we're going to get to in a second because I go in depth into the report uh, on their website and, and we'll get into some of the reasons why that is absurd. But for now, suffice it to say, I wanted to bring this in Christian nationalism, not a thing. It's just not a thing. There's no such thing as Christian nationalism. That would be like being an Islamic Judist. You're, you're, you can't be a person. And I'm talking about not racial Jews. I'm talking about specifically the religion of Judaism. You cannot be both Jewish and Muslim. It's not a thing. You have to be one or the other. Those two are mutually exclusive. For the same reason you couldn't be a Muslim Christian. Well, no, Christians believe that Christ was God in the flesh. Islamists believe that he was not and he was merely a prophet. Those two things cannot coincide together. And so the idea that you could be a Christian nationalist is just stupid. Because here's the thing. A nationalist... The whole ideology is deeply tribalistic, deeply rooted in racism, and the belief that some nations are better than others, that your nation is superior to other nations. Now, you can believe that your nation is superior to another nation and not be a nationalist, because you know that, that's a completely different ideological plane. I believe, for example, that there are many nations that are superior to other nations, but I'm not a nationalist because I don't believe that my nation, by right of being my nation is something that I ought to have loyalty to. I have loyalty to the ideas behind it, but I'm not loyal to the nation itself in the sense that that trumps every other belief. I don't have a special affiliation, like a tribal affiliation or a racial identity with my nation. I just don't. And that's everything that nationalism was born out of. And Christianity specifically teaches against that. The whole point of Christianity is that we're all created by one God, we're all brothers and sisters, and everybody is made equal through the saving power of Jesus Christ. Because if you're an atheist, if you're a secularist, nationalism makes perfect sense. Nationalism is rooted in secularism. All of the major nations that fell prey to nationalism, every single one, run by secularist, run by atheist. That's not a coincidence. And so it's hilarious to me they're trying to ascribe nationalism to Christianity when the truth is the only nations that were ever truly nationalistic were secular in nature. <laughs> I mean, the, the nationalistic tendencies, for example, of Mussolini or of Adolf Hitler, those were incredibly secularist regimes that denied and denounced the Christian worldview. And so it's ironic that they have their ideology completely backwards in this. They're trying to say that nationalism and Christianity are somehow equated or the same thing, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. There's a reason that we have verses that talk about in Christ Jesus, you don't have Jews and Greeks, you don't have bond and free, you don't have male and female, that everybody is one within the church. That's part of the symbolism, for example, of the Lord's Supper. You'll remember that favoritism was being played, and, and we see this played out in the first the, the first century church, both with James and also with Peter, and Paul actually rebuked Peter for showing favoritism and for not sitting with the Gentiles and not dining with the Gentiles when the Lord's Supper was, was being carried out in the worship service. 
And so everything that, that Christianity teaches is in opposition to nationalism. You cannot be a Christian nationalist. That is not a thing. You are either a nationalist or a Christian or something else entirely, but you cannot be both. So in case you're wondering about this and how they decided this, because the, the article doesn't give a lot of detail, I actually went to the American Atheist website and looked at their rankings of Alabama and what their, their primary gripes were. One thing that I noticed that was really interesting is that some of the really big gripes that they had, some of the things that they said made Alabama not religiously free, that they were actually harming the religious liberty within the state, was uh, just, it, it was stuff that had nothing to do with religious liberty. For example, abstinent sex ed. Again, that's something that you don't have to have a religious worldview to come to the conclusion that abstinence before marriage is a better way to live. There was an article just, I want to say, two or three weeks ago in The Atlantic that came out with a study saying that people who wait until marriage to have sex actually are far less likely to get divorced. They are happier in their marriages, and the less sexual partners you have before marriage, the more likely you are to be content in the marriage that you have that they actually have better sexual relations with their spouses than the people that have slept around beforehand. And so, and the Atlantic is hardly, I mean, it, it's not exactly the blaze or the Christian post or, or life news or any of those. The idea that you could only have a Christian worldview to reach these conclusions is just stupid. Uh, homosexuality not taught. Again, you, you don't even need a religious worldview to come to the conclusion that homosexuality is a bad thing. By the way, you know who was really against homosexuality? Another famous atheist, Adolf Hitler. Somebody that had a completely secular worldview still thought homosexuality was bad. Now, I'm not saying that that's a ringing endorsement or we ought to be looking to Adolf Hitler for moral teachings. I'm just saying that they're acting as though that in and of itself is something that could only come from a religious worldview, and it's just not true. Another one that was really odd, and this will be important later, so remember this, school voucher programs. Apparently just believing that parents ought to be able to teach what school their children attend, that that in and of itself is somehow a threat to religious liberty. What's really going on here, what is really at the core of this whole thing, is that they are saying that anybody that does not toe the line on their secularist leftist agenda is a threat to religious liberty. They are trying to disguise that under the veil of saying that they are people that are for religious liberty. Because ultimately, they are for government. Government is their god, and you cannot opt out of that. They are the religious zealots trying to force you to do what they say. Because their religion is secularism. And if you don't abide by that, and if you don't turn your children over to be indoctrinated by our religion, then you are a threat and you must be taken down. And if you don't believe me, why else would they be against a school voucher program? Why would they be against a program that says, well, we'll just let parents make decisions for their child's own education. They say, no, that's wrong, and that's a threat to religious liberty. Why? Because they're saying if schools don't teach things the way that we want them taught, because they also had a problem with what they called anti-science, anti-evolution being taught in the schools. Now, I don't know the specifics on that. They didn't have links to show where this was going on. I don't know exactly what Alabama's law is on that that they had a, a problem with. I'd be happy to invite somebody and have that discussion with them. But that's a pretty clear indication. They're saying, no, no, the schools have to teach things the way that we see it. And if they don't do that, we need to make sure that kids don't have the opportunity to opt out and get an education that teaches a different worldview. So in other words, they're saying, you have to turn your children over to us to be educated exactly the way that we want them to. And if you say no, you're a threat to religious liberty. No, no, you're the one that's trying to indoctrinate children who do not belong to you, that you are not the parents of. You're the crazy religious zealot. And it amazes me that they cannot see that. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered.
which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.